be doing another week of Kids Connection with you. They say that time flies when you're having fun and 2021 is moving right along. So we must be having a good old time. This month we're talking about responsibility. In case you need a reminder, responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. If you want to have fun playing a game, then you need to be responsible and play by the rules. And it's like that in real life too. That's right. We can follow some important rules for life that will help us play well and finish strong. I'm excited to see what game we're going to be playing today, but first, everyone needs to stand up and get ready to dance because it's time for our theme song. You never turn away, you never leave my side And every time I call your name out just to find That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know you with my heart there are days when i feel i need a friend and then i hear your voice reminding me again that you're already right here with me never been alone i can trust you with my heart because this i know you are always faithful you love me from the start Trust you with my heart. No matter what may come, no matter what I go through, God, you are never gonna fail me. I will trust you with my heart. you with my heart. So what's the game today, Tarzan? I'm so glad you asked. Today's game is Pictionary. If you don't know how Pictionary works, here's a quick explanation. There's a word in this envelope. It was given to me before I came here, so neither one of us knows what it is. I'm going to open the envelope, I'm going to read the word, and then I'm going to start drawing the word while I'm doing, before that happens, Smalls, you're going to set a 60 second timer, because that's how long you have to guess what I am drawing. Oh my goodness. Are you ready for this? Uh, as ready as I'll ever be, All right, but I'm first ready. I need to get my timer ready. Alright, well I need to read the word and figure out what I'm going to do. Okay. Okay, that's our timer sound. That's the timer sound, alright. Okay, one minute. One minute, 60 seconds. All right, Ready? on your mark, get set, go. Okay, we got a box, uh, a window, um, a bunk bed, uh, a, a Monopoly board. Yeah! Yay! Crushed it. How long did that take? I did that in 15 seconds. Awesome. Did you get it at home? So this, was, right. this was the board. 
And then I was gonna draw a bunch of these, and I was gonna put dollar signs on them. Oh, that would have been good. Right? No, I was the square. The square. I got on the window, and then I was like, oh, these could be like a ladder, right? Yep. And then you started like filling them in all around, and I was like, we're doing rules for life. And our theme has been all about games, so Monopoly, very, very fun. Mm -hmm. We're gonna stand up and sing our next song. clear this week. So, in his stories, Jesus would describe everyday situations to help people understand God's plan for the world for themselves. So one day in Jerusalem, Jesus told this story to his followers. At least, our version. Our version? Well, there's a lot of different translations of the Bible because it wasn't originally written in English. So this is just the one of many possible ways of telling the story and understanding the story. That's kind of cool. Right? So, Jesus' story goes like this. Once, there was a boss who was going to go on a business trip. 
So he called in his three servants, and he gave them each some money. He wanted them to take care of it while he was gone. Um, had they ever heard of a bank there, but? They didn't have banks back then. Ah, well, still kind of weird. Fair enough. But nonetheless, the boss gave five bags of gold to the first servant. To the next servant... Uh, Tarzan? Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much a bag of gold is. Can you, like, give us things we can understand? Oh, sure. So to the first servant, he gave five million dollars. Oh my and gosh. To the next servant, he gave two million dollars. And to the last servant, he gave one million dollars. That is a lot of money to be handing out, but I guess, what, what would you do without a bank? I guess. So while the boss was away, it was time for the servants to get to work. The boss expected them to use his money well and make more money while he was away. Oh jeez, that's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. So they had to make some kind of like investment then. Yeah. That's where you put your money into a project and then that project makes money so that you can make money. Exactly. So the first servant invested all $5 million into, let's say, dairy farms. And you know what? He made another five million dollars. I need to start investing in whatever he's investing in. Get that man on Shark Tank. The second servant invested all two million in farming equipment. This made it so they could make the equipment better, which meant it could do more work in less time. So he made another two million dollars. And another success story. Let's see if the servants can go three for three. Now, the problem with investing is, when the thing you invest in goes well, you make money, but when the project you invest in does poorly, you lose money that you may never get back. Oh no, what happens to the third guy? Well, according to Jesus' story, he didn't do anything with the money. He didn't do anything? Didn't he have like a million dollars? Well, he didn't do nothing. He buried it. Oh, like a pirate. Well, I, I guess. But a buried chest of treasure of money is like the closest thing to a bank that they could have. So eventually, the boss came back from his trip, and the first thing he did was go check on his money and his servants. He was thrilled with the first and second servants. To them he said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. But... But what? Well, the, the last servant, mm -hmm. He didn't double his money like the other two. I feel like the boss is going to be upset with him. He was very disappointed to say the least. To see that the servant hadn't done anything with what he'd been given was really disappointing. He told the servant that he should have put the money into a project that he knew would succeed. Ugh, I hate when people are disappointed in me. That's not all. He took the last servant's one million dollars and he gave it to the first servant. The first servant, who at this point, had ten million dollars. Well, I want to say that this story here is all about money, but I feel like there's kind of a deeper meaning that you're trying to get at here. And you would be right. The message Jesus was trying to get across is that those who are responsible with what they're given will be given more, but those who waste it will end up with nothing. So not about money. Well, the example Jesus used was money. And we definitely need to be responsible with our money and our possessions. But this life rule is about more than just those things. We should make the most of the gifts and talents God has given each of us. We should make the most of our knowledge and the things we're experienced in, in our lives. We should make the most of the love God has given us by sharing his love with others. So really what it comes down to is that we need to make the most of what you've been given. Kind of like how I had I had to use what little details you drew mm -hmm. to figure out the whole word that you were trying to draw. Yep. That's so cool. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, 
we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. When Jesus wanted to share truth with the people that followed him, he often would tell a parable, a story. Here is what the kingdom of heaven will be like. These parables used everyday situations to help people think and understand God's truth for themselves. One day in Jerusalem, Jesus wanted to share a story with his followers. If he told that same story today, it might sound something like this. There once was a man who created the world's most amazing energy bar. Just one bite and I feel like I could leap tall buildings in a single bound. What is even in these? If I told you, I'd have to leave you stranded on top of Mount Everest. The man did such a good job of selling the energy bars, he soon became wealthy. Then one day, he got on a Zoom call with three of his top employees. Zane, Ren, Murray. Yes, sir. Right here. Murray. Says he's here. I don't hear him. Start your audio, Murray. Oh, hey, just, you know, I was finishing the movie. I've called you together for an important purpose. I'm going offline. You're what? <laughs> Completely screen free. I'm going to travel the world for a while. Hike Everest, cross the Sahara, dive down to the Mariana Trench, miles beneath the ocean, all fueled by my energy bar, of course. Dude, that is far out. Literally. The rich man had carefully studied his employees and knew what they could handle. While I'm gone, I'm leaving you in charge of my money. Zane, I'm sending you an encrypted key to access my gold account with 5,000 credits. Oh, excellent. Ren, here's an encrypted key to access my silver account with 2,000 credits. I'm on it. Murray, check your inbox for an encrypted key to my bronze account with 1,000 credits. That's it. That's it. I'm going off the grid. Immediately, Zane accessed the money from the gold account and put that money to work. He hired scientists and designers to create a suction shoe that would keep a rock climber from falling. I call it the fly shoe. The fly shoe sold as nearly as fast as the energy bar. Zane soon made his money back and more. Ren, meanwhile, made excellent use of the money in the silver account. What does every adventurer need besides fuel and shoes? A friend. So Ren invented a robotic hamster that could travel anywhere an explorer can go from the highest of mountains to the deepest ocean trench. Soon, robotic adventure hamsters sold as fast as toilet papers. So that left only Murray, who sat looking at the bronze account on his computer screen. Only 1,000? It's like he expects me to mess it up. Well, I'll show him, ha! Huh. So Murray took the money out in coins and stashed them in a giant bag. Then late one night, dug a hole in his backyard, stashed the bag inside, and covered it right back up. Great, now all I have to do is go back inside and watch Netflix. After a very long time, the rich man returned from the wilds. Ah, electricity, internet. I have returned to the grid. Please accept my meeting invite. Zane and Ren hopped on the call immediately. Murray took a little longer. Start, Start your audio, Murray. Oh yeah, there it is. I'm excited to see how you've handled my money, Zane. Through sales of the fly shoe, I've added 5,000 more credits to your gold account. Well done, good and faithful employee. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share my happiness. Now, Ren. My adorable traveling robotic hamsters have earned 2,000 more credits for your silver account. Well done, good and faithful employee. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share my happiness. <laughs> so, uh, Murray. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, hold on. Murray reached down and held up a muddy sack. He spilled the coins across the desk. How? much is that? 1,000 credits. That's what I gave you. Yeah. Yeah, well, I knew you're a tough businessman. You, you make money even where you haven't worked for it. I didn't want you getting mad, so I just buried the money. See? It's all safe. Murray offered a weak smile. 
But instead of smiling back, the rich man went red in the face. You lazy man. If you knew I can make money even when I haven't worked for it, you should have at least kept my money in the bank where it would have earned a little bit. Uh, sure. The rich man turned to his personal assistant and ordered. Take Murray's credits and give them to Zane, who already has 10,000 credits. Oh, and, and take Murray off my payroll immediately. The message of Jesus' story was clear. If you are responsible for what you were given, You'll be given more. If you wasted it, you end up with nothing. In the story that Jesus told us, God is like the boss, and we are like the people that he has entrusted with all of the money. We have the responsibility to make the most out of what we've been given. Remember, if you want to see the perfect example of making the most of what you have, look at the way Jesus lived. Jesus made the most of his time with people while he was on earth. He showed love to everyone and helped them understand what's most important to God. We need to do that too. We need to make the wise choice and make the most of what God has given us. Our money and possessions, our talents, our relationships, and our time. Oh, speaking of time, we're all out of time for today. All right, well, I hope to see you all again next week and have an awesome day. Bye.